So WWE Backlash 2016 is in the books. This was a SmackDown only pay-per-view, the first of 2016 since the brand split and there are gonna be many more to come with Raw and SmackDown holding their own events. But this one decided two championships that were gonna be the first ever SmackDown Tag Team Champions and the first ever SmackDown Women's Champion, even though we've already had SmackDown Tag Team Champions before. And yeah, they called this the WWE Tag Team Championship, but it was the SmackDown Championship. Let's not get that shit twisted. Those two matches, well, there were two tag team matches that, that had to decide the tag team championships. But the women's championship was really, really a turning point here because, okay, I'll get to that in a bit. But this is my review slash report slash results of WWE Backlash 2016. Enjoy. As far as I know, this match wasn't even fucking scheduled. They just, I guess, threw this shit together at the last minute. Baron Corbin versus Apollo Crews. Now, the thing about this match that didn't make any sense to me was that they've had better matches in NXT. And then they come to SmackDown on the main roster and they have the mediocre match that they have. I'm sorry. If you're going to fucking go from... Uh, a standpoint of trying to make it to the big time and then get to the big time and perform like you're in the mediocre. No, that doesn't work that way. It doesn't, okay? Now, Baron Corbin actually won the match. And it was a perfect showcase of what these guys could do. But we already knew what these guys could do if you watched NXT. Ah, man. Who did Apollo Crews piss off? He was just... Okay, they tried to rise him, and then they just, eh. Ever since his feud with Sheamus, which wasn't really a feud, and then, you know, they throw him to the wolves as far as saying, hey, yeah, you, yeah, they threw him to the wolves, literally. The lone wolf, Baron Corbin. And Baron Corbin's career, ever since he got in the main roster, has been garbage. They have him win the Andre Memorial Battle Royal, and then he hasn't done shit since then. He hasn't been going for any titles he hasn't been decimated he hasn't been look maybe this will be a turning point then but for these two to go against each other now especially if they're not established on the main fucking roster it means nothing i mean fuck man will they even be in an episode of smackdown to have a rebound match or or to have or for i don't know but baron corbin wins and i'm not even sure why this match took place on this event in the first place since it wasn't even fucking listed to but they this was a mediocre match compared to what they had done before at nxt so yeah that uh, fuck i don't understand yeah fuck it baron corbin wins enough of that Okay, this is one of those matches of this event that was going to make or break the event. The six-pack challenge for the Women's Championship. First ever SmackDown Women's Championship. I said it on my prediction video. Do not let fucking Nikki get this belt. Nikki Bella doesn't deserve it. Necky Bella, because she has an injured neck. Shout out to Blaze and No Funsky, by the way. She doesn't deserve that belt, period. Especially to be the first ever champion of anything. No. Fuck no. So the eliminations took place pretty much in the places that they were supposed to. They did. And again, who saw Naomi winning the match? Anybody? Show of hands, comment below if you thought Naomi was going to win or had a chance. Did you think that, I don't know, Natalia had a chance, even though she can actually go in a ring? She hasn't been relevant for a long period of time. Oh, uh, uh, God. Look, 
All of those ladies that were in that match, except for one, was, wasn't qualified here to be the first ever SmackDown Women's Champion. And I'm glad, I am so glad that Becky won. And now she's the Women's Champion there. Maybe, just maybe, this can be some sort of establishment to their women's division. But they have a lot of work to do. They do. If Nikki or Nikki Bella would have won this, I would have just called this the Divas Championship again. But now since Becky is the champion, it, it has a chance to actually fucking be important and mean something here. As long as she wrestles, as long as she keeps it for a while, as long as they have good matches, but they, this this fucking roster on this on this show needs help. Well, both women's rosters need help, but this one needs to be established way more because fucking they barely have anybody that we can take seriously on SmackDown for their women's division. And by the way, why the fuck did they give her a replica? They didn't even have a fucking real women's championship belt yet. That was a fucking replica that they gave her. And I'm like, wait a second. You could actually tell that shit is a fucking replica. Make that woman a fucking real fucking belt. For Christ's sake, you've known that this title, man, you know that this was coming for weeks, perhaps months, and you give her a fucking replica? Fuck that. Becky deserves better. Ugh. I'm just happy that Becky won the championship. Hands down, she was my pick and the best case scenario. So congratulations to Becky Lynch, first ever SmackDown Women's Champion. And I hope you have a long, successful reign and great matches to boot. All righty. Anyone expect the Hype Brothers to win? No. That, that. I could stop that right there. <laughs> the Usos turned heel. They're, they had a second chance along with the Hype Brothers, the Hype Bros. We knew that the Hype Bros weren't going to get anywhere. We just knew this. The only thing that was wrong was the Usos coming out with their current music. They should change the fucking music. They really want to establish themselves being heels. They came out sort of, you know, trying to look like badasses or whatever, and they were the team that, okay, fine. Yeah, they are the team to beat on SmackDown besides American Alpha, but American Alpha is out due to the Usos injuring them and, well, injuring Chad Gable specifically. And they did the same thing to Zack Ryder in this match. But again, who thought the hype bros were going to advance and or win this tournament? Please, I would like to know if that's you. But I just picked the Usos and the Usos won. So they advance to the finals. Duh. You see, this is what I'm talking about. As far as knowing how shit is going to go, even though I had my high hopes for something else. I I had high hopes for Ziggler, even though it makes no sense for him to get the Intercontinental Championship after failing to win the World Heavy the WWE World Championship. Damn, I'm getting tongue twisted there. They don't even know what to call this title at times. But this match, first of all, as usual, the Miz got out wrestled. He did. Ziggler did the overselling thing, as he always does. To try to make Miz look like a credible threat, which he never looks like a credible threat. He just fucking doesn't. Regardless of what, anything that is set up in the ring or whatever. And he fucked up on a couple of submission moves. He fucked up on a couple of surfboards. This is what I'm like, man, learn how to do the fucking shit properly before you try to do that shit in the fucking ring. He was botching the figure four when he was first doing it. How the fuck do you botch a figure four? Anyway, Ziggler out-wrestled him, period. That's what took place here. The, 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 the craziest part about this match is when The Miz actually mocked Daniel Bryan. 
and did the corner drop kicks. And it's like, are you kidding me here? Ziggler was overselling these drop kicks. Period. To try to make this mean something. It and 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 it, it look, no, it didn't mean anything. It didn't look like any credible threat. And by the way, the Miz tried to run again, to try to get himself counted out again until Ziggler put him back in the ring. So the argument still stands about the Miz being a coward when when the fucking look at the end of the day here, if he would have stayed in the ring, done everything by himself and won the match, then that debate is over. Period. Because I give credit where credit is due. But since he tried to run away, he had to get put back in the ring. And once again, his wife is the reason that he won, spraying that shit in Ziggler's face, basically doing the work. That means, once again, that The Miz is a coward and that he needs help always from somebody else to do some work in order for him to win his fucking matches. Therefore, can't take him seriously as any type of champion or even as a fucking wrestler because at the end of the day, we all know that he should. And look, getting his ass whooped by a lot of other people, it's just, no. (laughs) Ziggler, what have you done to deserve this? (laughs) Being fed to fucking all these people. It's just, yeah, there's no hope for Ziggler now. Who is going to take Ziggler seriously after this? Come on. Are you going to have a rematch? Are they, are Ziggler going to come out with excuses? Yeah, it was your wife. Yeah, yeah, that could happen. But at the end of the day, yeah, this is basically the garbage of the night. It is. All they needed to do was have the Miz win on his own fucking accord. And they can't even do that to make him look convincing. They can't even sell that to us. Why do you think that is? The reason why this match took place in the first place is because Randy Orton couldn't compete. Not because of that ankle shit that they did backstage, but he wasn't clear because of concussions. They say it was due to him getting his ass whooped by Brock Lesnar. Well, you know, I think that almost everyone that got their ass whooped by Brock Lesnar didn't get didn't recover for a while. But now they had to have Randy Orton's replacement, and they had to do that ankle injury backstage with Bray Wyatt. So what do they do? They send Kane out there. Yeah, Kane, Isaac Yankum. You know, fake Diesel. Yeah, that guy. (laughs) The guy that hasn't been relevant for quite some time. They send him out out there to face Bray Wyatt in a no-holds-barred match. This is easily the worst match of the night. Sorry. It just was. Because, first of all, it wasn't even supposed to take place. The no-holds-barred thing added nothing to it because of the participants. One, look. Bray Wyatt should have won this match. I'm sorry. How are we going to take him seriously now as a contender for the WWE World Championship? How? After his decline, after his losses, after... And now him losing to Kane? Look, I understand that Kane is supposed to be this destroyer, but he hasn't been a destroyer or relevant for quite some time. This could have boosted Bray up. This could have actually done something for Bray Wyatt as far as saying, okay, he is one of the people that are going to be next in line for this fucking championship, so give him a shot at it. But him losing to Kane, that totally torpedoes all of that shit. They would have to book him perfectly, and I mean perfectly for us to take him absolutely seriously to get this fucking title. But I don't think it's going to happen now. I just don't, at least for maybe a couple of years. I could be wrong, but yeah. No holds barred match. Uh, And Kane shouldn't have won. He just shouldn't have. 
Ray should have won that match. It's it's just sad. It's sad, really. Fuck. Randy Orton couldn't perform. They send Kane out there, and uh, Kane wins. Someone explain that to me, please. There are a couple of things funny about this match. Number one, it was the fact that Heath Slater and Rhino got there in the first place. Number two, they actually won on their own accord. They beat the Usos with no outside interference, no help, no shenanigans, no weapons, no cheating, no American Alpha showing up, none of that. I even was I even was putting my head, yeah, American Alpha was gonna go get in, um, do a run in and the Usos were gonna lose. I even thought that that could have happened, but it didn't. Heath Slater and Rhino are the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. So Heath Slater has a contract now, and they beat the Usos. Um, okay. Understood that the Usos were a perfect replacement because them Heath Slater and Rhino beating America Alpha? No. I, uh-uh. Not especially fair and square. No. Uh-uh. There was no way that shit could have took place. Not in my mind. No. If anybody disagrees with me, please leave a comment below. But, yeah. Um, shit. Heath Slater actually performed really well. The thing about it is, he's, he's okay as a wrestler. He's not bad. He's not stellar, but he's not bad. He's better than The Miz. And, and Rhino, yeah, he's in his twilight years. He's about to run for office. And he can still go in the ring. He's still convincing. He can still actually have a good fucking match when called upon. So, but the Hagen as tag team champions, I don't think this shits on the titles, but I think it's kind of, it, it is kind of a joke because, I mean, damn, everyone expected American Alpha to, to be the first ever SmackDown tag team champions. Even I expected that. And then when this injury angle came out and then the Usos turned heel, I was like, yeah, I see where this is going. And I predicted that Keith and Rhino were going to win. I, I predicted that the Usos were going to lose, and that's what happened. But to happen clean? Wow. Just wow. I don't know what to really say about that. Congrats to Keith and Rhino. But how, is, how long is this going to last? Are they going to lose this coming Tuesday? Hey, to say, huh? Okay, people, for those that doubted WWE, for those that doubted AJ Styles, what do you have to say now? Seriously, what excuses can you come up with? Since AJ Styles debuted at the Royal Rumble this year, by the way, he has been having ups and downs. They put a slab of believability with him. They didn't make him an unstoppable, un, un fucking wreckable force. No, they couldn't fucking do that. They had a few with Jericho with wins and losses. They they catapulted him for number one contender against Roman Reigns, which he lost, but that was due to interference pretty much by the club and by the Usos and all that garbage. Yes, all that shit happened. But you knew that as soon as the roster splits up, everybody was like, yeah. AJ is going to finally, finally get his due. It's not congested anymore as far as the main event scene. He's on SmackDown. So for him to be WWE world champion, come on. This was a great fucking match between the two. And it showcased a lot of their stuff. And bravo for WWE for actually putting the strap on AJ Styles. The way it ended does not matter. I'm going to say that right now. AJ is a heel, and that is a heel fucking tactic. The main difference between something like this and something like The Miz does is that AJ did this shit by himself and did it brilliantly and did it alone. The referee didn't fucking see it. I understand that more than anything else. If the club would have came out, then that would have been Miz-worthy as far as saying someone else had to do all the work and so on and so forth. But no, this was the end. It was still payback. People were still laughing at AJ because of nuts. So 
He kicked him in the nuts on SmackDown. He kicked him in the nuts here. Yeah. Ah, nuts. And there you go. Some people are like, oh, this is tainted. Oh, you have to resort to that. No. It was a heel tactic. It's better than running away. It's better than hitting him with a foreign object. It's better than having other people fucking helping you and so on, or someone else coming to help him against Ambrose just because he didn't like Dean No. It's better than all of that. AJ Styles is your new WWE world champion. And, and look, again, this comes full circle here because AJ has been all around the world proving himself, being a champion everywhere except for here, the mainstay, the fucking, the, the big company, the big fish, the WWE, and now he's there. So, again, for the people that doubt it, what do you have to say? I actually want to hear or read what people have to say about that. AJ is your new WWE World Heavyweight Champion, and I'm proud of WWE for making that decision. Dean Ambrose didn't have a long, lengthy run, but a lot of people were saying he was getting stale. So I do understand. I, I do understand. He was getting stale to a certain degree. He, he just was. But that was because he didn't have anything worthy thrown in front of him. He had Ziggler, and that was it, pretty much. So, what do you guys think about the event? Do you think it was good? Do you think it was like, eh? do you think that whoever won deserved to win? I'm always open for a debate when it comes to wrestling, so comment section is below. Drop kicks, body slams, throw motherfuckers over the top rope, both feet hitting the floor. <laughs> yes, I'm a wrestling fan. This is the theme, and I'll see you later. Credits.